Hello and welcome to another Java programming tutorial. In this tutorial, we will read an XML document using a JavaFX application. So let me first show you the end result of this application. So when I run this application, it gives me a JavaFX form, which allows me to enter an ID, which is within the range of 3900 to 3902. So let's say if I enter 3900 and click on show data, it grabs the data from the XML document and shows the entire record. Similarly, when I change it to 3901, it shows me the next record and so on and so forth. Let me show you my XML document and then I'll walk you through the solution so that you can also learn how you can combine the JavaFX application with the Java API for XML or Java API for XML parsing to JAX and the JAX technologies with the JavaFX and how you can make all of this happen. So let me first show you my XML document. My XML document is being created such that I have a root uh, tag called class which has several student records and each student has an attribute called ID and it has first name, last name and score to be the three children tags under the student tag. So that's the structure of my XML document. Now in my read data application, I created my main text field where I will be accepting the input from user, which will be the ID, followed by three additional text fields where the output will be displayed and the button that will display the output. To set up this environment, I used the grid pane, which allowed me to put items in a nice grid with the horizontal and vertical gaps between the items. And remember the first column is zero and the first row is also zero. So I am generating a label on the fly. So let me also show you the output in the meanwhile while I walk you through this whole process. So I have a label on the fly which displays enter ID 3900 to 3902 and uh, this is placed in the first column of the first row. So basically it is then in the second column of the first row. So the first number represents the column number, the second re number represents the row number. So here I am displaying my text field ID. Then my button is in the second column of the second row. So you can certainly skip an entire column. Then I have another label followed by another text box of text field, a label, a text field, a label, a text field. After that, I'm writing an event handler on my button. I'm saying that when somebody clicks on the button, the name of the button is show. I'm using the Lambda expression and I'm saying that call the function display. So on whenever the action is performed, the function display will be called. I'll show you the body of the display function in just a minute. And I have turned all these three text field this, I mean like their set editable mode is off so you can't really click in and edit anything inside those items. And then the alignment is uh, position center and then we are adding the grid pane to the scene and scene to the primary stage and setting this uh, primary status title which you can see here XML data app. The primary stage is passed as a parameter to the start method if you're familiar with the JavaFX. I have uh, already shared with you several tutorials on JavaFX. Now moving down to the actual uh, display method. In the main method, I'm launching the application. So in the display method, what we are doing is we're using the file object from java.io package to load the XML document into uh, the input file object. Now once the object has the XML document, now since I'm using the DOM approach, not the SACS approach, so DOM which is document object model in SACS which is simple API for XML, I've already given you guys um, how to read an XML document using a DOM approach before and I think I've also given you how to read a SACS approach before. So here what I'm doing is I'm uh, opening a document builder factory object followed by a document builder object on the document uh, builder factory object and then I'm creating a document object and I'm parsing the XML document using the document builder and then I'm normalizing it so that is readable by the Java. Next what I need to do is I need to grab my input from the text box into the display method. So the name of the text box where I'm entering the data, for example, 3900 is called ID. So get the text from the ID 
and put it in a variable read ID. Next, I'm using XPath and XQuery uh, XML technologies that you can also use in Java. So XPath allows the Java to write an entire path structure that I want to read. So since in my XML document, I want to read class and from there I want to read student. So that's why I build a path slash class slash student. And this is all in a string. I will use this string later on. I'll share, share with you where so that you can actually treat it like a database. Now this part is the X query. So what I'm saying is I want to query this path looking for an attribute called ID. So it's an at ID because ID is an attribute. I'm looking for an ID where the value of ID that I want to search for is held inside a variable read ID or object read ID of type string. And it's in single quotes because it's a string value. So that's how I can be. I can, I'm, I'm building my entire X query, which is built on the X path. Once I do this, I am creating my XPath object, followed by I'm using my XPath object to create an entire node list. This would give me the entire node list for where the data is being held. So the data will be held inside endlist. And since endlist will only have one item, because endless could have multiple structures. Why would I only have one item? Because there is only one student with that ID. That's why I know for sure that I'll only have one of the three structures that I have. Then I'm running through the length of that structure. I'm, I'm, I'm running a loop, i equals to zero to i to the, is less than the length of the, uh, the entire list structure. And the reason I did that is just to show you guys that if, you, if there were multiple um, result sets that came out of that query, then you will know a way how to traverse through the entire set. F for that very reason, I included the loop over here. Uh, for this example, loop is not needed. But anyway, uh, I'm now grabbing from the node list one item at a time, which is being held by the index number i, which i is zero right now for the first run. And as we know that there is only one student record, so only one of them will be pulled out. They'll be held inside the node. Now we are checking to see if the node is an element node, then we want to convert it into an element. And using this element e, we want to grab the tags inside it. So what XML can do, for example, I could have multiple occurrences of first name. So that's why I could read them like an array. So what XML does to start with, the, what Java does to start with, is it gives every tag a collection name. So that's why every tag is a collection. So since I know because I build the XML document that I have only one occurrence of first name, therefore I am using zero. That zero means the very first occurrence of first name. I want to grab the first occurrence of first name. I want to grab its content, means the text that is being held between the first name opening and closing tag and store that in F name as and similarly do the same for the last name and score. If there were like multiple first names, then I could actually do a little loop around this instruction to go with the length of the first name array and then keep reading till you reach the end of it and then move on to the last name. And then I could do the same with the score. If it was an array, I could just go through a loop around it and then that's how it could do it. So now after that, after I've grabbed all these values in the respective string objects, I'm now setting the text for the other three text fields that are at the bottom, which are non-editable to these three values. So upon clicking uh, the button, that's exactly what happens. So when you click on the button after you enter an ID, and that's it displays the data. If you change so when you change and you click on the button again, so every time you click on the button, it, it basically uh, grabs the current value that is held inside the ID text field. So I'm not, that's why I, I moved all of that logic inside the display because I wanna make sure that every time user enters a new value, 
the display method reads that value and accordingly builds the entire X query and X path. And that's how I was able to successfully read this. I could very well uh, create a um, drop down box in JavaFX and pre populate all the IDs inside the drop down box. And then, uh, as an item gets clicked from the drop down box, um, I, I could fire an event and that would then call a method that will show uh, all the other items inside. The text fields I could I could set it up that way as well I'm just giving you some ideas I just did it, it in a little bit simpler form but you could take it to the next level if you want to do it that way I hope this tutorial was helpful to all of you let me know in the comment section below take care till the next video bye bye